Hi, I'm going to read you a new book today. It's called Grow, Secrets of Our DNA. Now, when I was a little girl, I spent a lot of time in the garden and in the greenhouse with my dad and my grandpa. Um, and I was fascinated by the way things grew from seeds, from caterpillars, from birds, eggs, how things grow and change as they get older. And you know that you grew from a tiny little blob, too small to see inside your mum's tummy. And you grew and you changed and you got bigger and more able to do things as you got older. Now, the instructions for the way all living bodies grow are coded and they're coded in a chemical molecule called DNA. And that's kind of what this book is all about. Anyway, I'm going to read it to you now. And this is exciting for me because it's the first time I've read it aloud because it's very, very new. OK, I'll just show you the first page because it's really lovely. Grow secrets of our DNA. So there's a garden in the springtime, kind of about like it is now in a lot of people's gardens here in Europe, um, with little seeds sprouting and blossoms on the trees. All living things grow. Plants, animals and humans. The way they grow helps them to survive in different places. Some grow fast to make the most of really good times. And others grow slowly so they can keep going when times are tough. How much things grow is important too. Some never get very big while others grow to be enormous. There's two of my favourite animals on this page actually. There's um, a dwarf chameleon here that never gets bigger than a matchstick and this lovely thing, this is a, an ocean sunfish and you can just see how enormous that gets. But both of them, when they start life, they're pretty much the same size. Growing isn't only about size, it's about change. Now, if you look at this picture, you can spot some things that really change as they grow. Well, first of all, there are plants growing, so they grew from seeds. Seeds don't just get bigger and make bigger seeds. And caterpillars, see the little caterpillars down here? Caterpillars don't just grow into big caterpillars, they change into butterflies and moths. And you grew from a tiny blob smaller than a dot inside your mum's tummy. But your body didn't just get bigger, it changed shape. It got more complicated and able to do more things. You're going to go on growing and changing as you become an adult. You won't have to think about it or tell your body what to do. Because right from when you were dot sized, your body has been following a set of instructions. These instructions aren't written in words, but in a code made from something called DNA. Now, if you could see DNA, it would look like a spiral ladder with different kinds of steps. So it would look a bit like this. Now there are four different kinds of steps shown here in different colours. The spiral ladder of DNA has thousands and thousands of steps. So these four kinds can be ordered in many, many, many different ways. And if you look here, you can see that the steps on this twirly ladder are combinations of two different colours. The pattern of the steps creates the coded instructions to build bodies. We call that pattern the genetic code and we call each instruction a gene. It takes more than 20,000 genes working together in the right order to build a human body and keep it running. That's about two metres of DNA. So that 
that's what it would look like if you stretched it out. That's about two metres of DNA. Now, luckily, that DNA is very, very skinny and it folds up so small, you need a microscope to see it. That's how a copy of your genetic code fitted inside you when you were just the size of a dot and how it fits inside almost every one of the cells that make up your body. Half of your genetic code comes from your dad and half from your mum. And that's why you may look a bit like both of them. But the exact mixture of instructions that you get from your parents isn't exactly like your brothers and sisters, unless you are an identical twin. Your DNA is quite unique. By studying how similar or different genetic codes are, scientists can tell who's related to who. Although your genetic code is unique, it's pretty similar to that of your family and shows that you're all closely related. It's also quite similar to that of all the other people on Earth, because we're all human beings. Now, of course, animals and plants have a genetic code too. Human genetic code is very like chimpanzees because they're our closest animal relatives. It's quite a lot less like dogs. It's even less like the DNA of goldfish and much less like the DNA of a rose. But we share some parts of our genetic code with all living things. Those that are alive now and all of those that have ever lived on Earth. Although we're so different, our DNA shows that we are all part of life's big family. Our DNA connects us with each other and to our ancestors back through time to the very, very start of life on Earth. And that's because all life has always been written in one language. And that's the end. Hope you liked it. It'll be in the shop soon with this gorgeous, gorgeous cover covered with all that fantastic variety of life. And every single one of those carries a genetic code, that DNA that is the language that all life is written in. Bye.